Like the same way Jay does his music, he just he he memorizes it instead of write writes it down. So I think um, you know you you can. I'm pretty good at holding a cluster or chunk of words in my head and then start to write it down. You know, I'm pretty pretty good at that. And it's always a it's always a madness to it. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes it may look smooth, but for the most part, the way it feels is wild hair, Dr. Frankenstein <laughs> type of feeling. Like that's what's going on in my mind. So yeah. it's like a, 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 a happy madness going on in my mind. Fun madness. You know what I mean? Yeah, like piecing like it all together. Like a horror movie, just cutting the fucking body up with a smile <laughs> on your face. You know? <laughs> All right, well, we are here with an absolute legend, uh, one of the best lyricists of all time, one of the most innovative flows of all time. Uh, you know, I can't give enough flowers, but it's, a, it's an honor to be speaking with you. We're here at Twista. How are you feeling today? Thank you. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling good. Good. I was, we were talking about daily routine. Uh, mm -hmm. You said every day is a little bit different. What would be your ideal? What's the perfect day for Twista, if you could schedule out yourself? Um... Uh, perfect day. I would I would I would just say like a perfect day is me, you know, waking up, good breakfast, maybe um, you know, light workout or something. Um, just just jumping up on the phone, you know, doing my thing. But I want to get some recording in definitely. So so that's one thing. Like as a creative person, I'm always looking to do something. You know, if it's yeah. not already planned that day, then I'm always looking to create on some level. Well, you talk about always, always creating, always having an output. When you were working at McDonald's, were you rapping to the coworkers back in the day? No, like back then, it was <laughs> a whole different mind state. You know, you had your dreams and visions, but you know, I didn't start uh, rapping at my job until like later on. So okay. that was like earlier in my life. Well, yeah. When when was the first job where you started? You were doing it at the same time as kind of pursuing your. Uh, probably just later on in life as a phone operator I was doing I had a job as a phone operator and uh, around that time is when I probably started spitting for co-workers and stuff like that you ever spit on the phone for uh, somebody on the other side mm, I don't think so no. <laughs> do you remember the day you quit and, and never looked back yeah it was probably not too far from the time I made the Pope Pimp record yeah when I was getting it in with with a uh, do or die and around that time I made that record, I remember leaving and not looking back. So were some of the coworkers not super surprised because they kind of knew you had the, the skill? Some of them. Some of them had no idea, but a few of my close buddies, they already knew. So, so they were happy for me. Did you always have the belief and the vision in where you would one day be? Well, I always had the, the dream and the vision, but that belief didn't happen until you know, a, a little bit later, which was still early for me, but I would say I had been rapping for a while and a few things had happened for me. I would have a few reactions from certain people that led, that led me to believe that I could actually do it. So that belief happened, it started to happen a little later. So it was kind of building over, okay, this, I'm, I am who I think I am because everybody else is yeah, telling me. It, it was building up. My confidence would build, you know, every day, every rap, every reaction, every rap battle. You know, so it was building up. Was there a battle in particular that you remember where you got the best reaction? Mm, probably not one, but I do remember just like early on, always having a good reaction. Nobody ever really just standing in my face, toe to toe, just ripping me up or nothing like that. Like I was always a little bit ahead of my time. A little yeah. Bit. So that always helped me out. So. And were there people that you turned to in terms of mentorship or that you were looking at in the city, like, oh, I can turn to them for advice or I want to be where they're at one day at that time? Well, in a city, you know, it, it was just my peers. You know, you had other rap groups, other, other rappers that I knew that, you know, we, we, we mirrored each other's confidence and, and wanted to stay on each other's level. You know what I mean? So there was definitely a lot of artists in the city who we all wanted to stay on each other level. But back in the days, there was this dude named Corey D from Chicago. He was like the dopest battle rapper in the city. And, and we always wanted to make sure, especially me, 
that I stayed up to his level. Like I always looked up to him. I told him later on in life, like, man, I used to really look up to you. Yeah. But, but there were definitely a few people in the city who, who I admired and looked up to a lot. My, my boy D.A. Smart, he was one of the dopest freestyle rappers. Like he, he used to captivate crowds. So dope. It's so me to the name, but, but those are two I can just bring up right off top. So when was the first show that you did solo or even in, in your group, but it was like kind of your guys headlining show in the city? Do you remember what that was? Hmm. Not right offhand, but I definitely remember doing some big shows back in the days uh, with groups like Jodeci when they first came out. Wow. So, so these were the type of artists I was doing uh, shows with when they first came out. I remember doing a show with Das FX before when they came out. So many people, you know. I remember when uh, Jay-Z was still an original flavor, <laughs> and I did a show with, with, with them at that time. Wow. That's how long I have been That's doing it. That's yeah. in the game for so long. Did you recognize at that time that Hove was going to be who he was? Was there still like an inkling of like, okay, no, this guy's still. They actually all were dope, you know. And at that time, it was, it was uh, the one lead rapper, you know, when he would go with a piggy pump. Yeah. Piggy pump, you know, <laughs> so when he would come with that, I always thought he would be the one to stick out. But they all were dope. You know, they all were dope. What, what was it like being in a group at that time? And, and what were the dynamics that you guys kind of had to navigate early on with, you know, so, uh, steel sharpening steel and then like where to place everybody's verses and who gets certain spots at shows? Like, were you guys always kind of aligned in your vision at the, at the beginning? Well, we had blueprints. We had so many artists that would come out uh, ahead of us, you know, all the way back from a UTFO all the way up, you know, so from, from, from there on up, I can name so many. We could go groups like Hieroglyphics. Yeah. You know, when we talk West Coast, when we go East Coast, we had leaders of the new school. We had so many people that will represent the blueprint for us, especially groups like Wu-Tang, you know, Tribe Called Quest. So many groups, you know, to mirror ourselves being in the Midwest, you know. So, so I think uh, navigating and making sure that we were mimicking what others were doing in our own way was uh, always fun and easy for us back then as group members. Yeah, and I was watching an interview where you were talking about like, kind of once you got that part down and you knew in the city, like your, your respect level was there and everyone kind of knew, okay, these, these yeah. guys are doing what they're doing. Did you start dreaming like stadiums, world tours? Like when did your dreams start stretching from just the city into worldwide? Hmm. Probably when I started getting calls from people outside of the city. So, you know, I had a, um, a person that was spreading my music around at the time. We all spread each other music around, but at a certain point, my music had reached um, loud records before they were loud records. And my guy, Faye Dunavey, he was the first one, one to believe in me and actually want to sign like an artist like me. So he made the calls and, and uh, you know, we spoke back and forth flew down down here and uh, spit live for them and everything was like unique. So I became like the first artist to come out on Loud Records. Wow. That mm -hmm. was, I, I, know, I know there's probably not one moment where you had felt like you made it at that point and there's, mm -hmm. there's been so many since, but was there a moment where you realized, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm in the game, I really am living some of those dreams that I was dreaming? Mm -hmm. It was a lot of them. I think uh, one that sticks out is probably recording my first video, you know. So recording the video to Mr. Tongue Twister in the hospital with, with these uh, future superstars around. Because at the time we were just doing a video and everybody was new. But all of these uh, people turned out to be big act actors in, in the game and things like that. And just me laying on that bed and everything and seeing the lights and, and everything was focused on me like I hadn't been in that setting or aura before. So that, that whole thing was new. And that's when I felt like, okay, I made it. Did it take a while to get used to the spotlight and being in that main seat? Getting used to the spotlight as far as when I'm in the game, doing my thing and being involved in the entertainment part was always fun, exciting, some fear. The hard part was dealing with people, people that you know and when you go back home and you see the people and everybody looking at you different or talking different things like that. So, so it was, it was a, a whole interesting cup of tea. Yeah, and I think that that's something that 
every artist deals with in one way or another. For you, how was it when you were coming up? How did you know who to trust? How did you know who to keep in your circle? And how did you know who to take with you? Sometimes you know, sometimes you don't know. Some, some of those people end up still with you through that journey. Some of those people you end up having to let go. Some of those people let go themselves by their actions. You know, so a lot of times when, you, when, you, when, when like you're a young cat, you won't know. And some of us get lucky and have those right people in our corner, those diehard people that can stick with us all the way through. But some of us, we, we, we choose a few people that we shouldn't have chosen. And, you know, sometimes you'll change it. Some things, you, you, you know, I wouldn't change anything, you know, but yeah. looking back, definitely, I probably uh, would have made a few moves different here and there. But, but it, it was good, man. I had, I had fun with all of my boys, us coming up, doing our thing, creating that whole atmosphere and setting that made me and them feel like we were part of this whole rap thing, you know, so it was fun. I wouldn't change it. Well, you, you had a quote um, where you said, actually it was in, in our, our Hip Hop DX interview, mm -hmm. but you said, uh, it was like God said, you didn't get it like you wanted it, let me give it to you the way you really want it. Did you mm -hmm. always have that mindset of everything happens for a reason and I'll learn later? Or did, was that a lesson you learned along the way? Um, well, you, it's a little bit of both. I, I, I used to feel like everything happens for a reason, but then as you get older, you realize that you are the painter of your own picture mm -hmm. as you go. So, so uh, I did realize the power of hard work and drive and perseverance. I'll never forget that word perseverance because when I met LL Cool J for the first time, one of my favorite rappers, I was walking on the red carpet. We was at the Vibe Awards. I won an award that night too. He just kept looking at me. I was like, man, what are you about to say? And all he said was with the LL voice. Do you see what perseverance will get you? I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? So, 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 so I definitely realized the power of hard work, perseverance, and uh, like the, it, it was like I would jump, like it would be an album or something would happen, then almost 10 years later, something else would happen, like adrenaline rush, and then 10 years later again, then you come with kamikaze. So these leaps kept happening because of the hard work, so. Yeah, and it, it's interesting for you to have not gotten fully jaded or even have the perseverance to push through during that period because that, that's a long time, mm -hmm. you know, to deal with the music industry, to deal with a lot of things before your, your breakthrough almost. You know, you were mm -hmm. already on, but that took you to a new level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were there times in the course of those however many years where you wanted to kind of throw it all away in terms of rap and say, I'm done? Yeah, plenty times. Yeah, I think a lot of artists go through that. Uh, plenty times. Before I made the Pope Pimp record, I was through rapping, like that was it. So when I got to that record, I had made my mind up that I was gonna write the type of verse and create the type of music for that song that would take me to the next level. So if it didn't happen with, with the next few records I was working then, I would have stopped. I remember telling my buddies and everything. Then I remember telling them when I was about to write the Pope Pimp record, I looked at them, I said something along the lines of, I'm about to change the way people look at rap or some words like that wow. because I kind of knew where I was going to take the flow. So, so right before that song, I pretty much had let the guys know that I was going to hang it up and take a different direction in life if it didn't happen. Wow. That's, that's cool to know when you're in the moment because sometimes you look back on the moment, but yeah. are there other songs that you knew or, mm -hmm. or moments where you're like, this is it. I know when I put it out into the world, it's going to change everything. Just a few. After that, I mean, uh, what song stuck out to me like that? Overnight Celebrity, I knew that song was going to be something. Once we were listening to it ourselves and then looking back at it. And then it's like, like album songs that I knew people would, would uh, rock with over time. Yeah. You know, I knew the Weather song was going to be a jam when we recorded that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain album songs like I would feel, like Adrenaline Rush that yeah. I started off that album with. I knew that was gonna like hit hard. So certain songs you can kind of feel and the people around you will let you know. Even though it's not the full fan base, you will have like an immediate fan base or group of people around you that kind of let you know. Well, you talked about with Overnight Celebrity, uh, finding the sample mm -hmm. that Ye ended up using. When were you like, oh, this is gonna be great for the song and then how did you know it was gonna fit in? Like Just latching on to his sound so fast. Like, like I heard where he was, coming from and how he was making his music and then I think both of us being from Chicago and having a certain vibe and me listening to the Slow Jams record 
and the Lenny Williams record always being a favorite song of mine and me playing off word words and cadences. So that that girl you know I, I, I that always felt like something beyond just him singing to me. Almost like his voice was music. Girl, you know I, I, I love you. Yeah. So so I wanted him to do something with it and I didn't know where he was gonna take it. And and he, he said he played with it for a while before he finally got the, the, the vibe and the sound that he wanted. And when he sent it back, it, it was phenomenal. I loved it. Was, is, at that time, was that Kanye's process more like, okay, you, you guys have the, the concept, he has a sample, is it just, all right, I'm gonna let him cook, wait for him to come back to me? Or are you get kind of checking in back and forth? It, it's different, it depends on where we both are. If we're in the studio together, then it's gonna kind of happen at the same time. Sometimes we may meet for a moment and then he goes off and I go off and we may like call each other and get back in like that. So, so it's usually different, you know, depending on how we're moving at the time. Got it, got it. One feature I wanted to ask you about, which I, I haven't heard you talk too much about, is Shaquille O'Neal. Mm -hmm. uh, you, Trina, and Shaq had a song together in 2001. Yeah. And I feel like even speaking of Kanye, the concept was kind of similar to on slow jams when he's like, you know, I need to call my boy to, to speed it up. That's kind of the hook, you know, mm -hmm. do it faster for me. How did how did Shaq pitch that idea and how did you guys first connect? Shaq Shaq is a rap head, a rap <laughs> a rap fan, rap fanatic, you know, he does his thing and, and like even back then, like for him to be a fan of Fushnikins back then, that let me know that we were kind of in the same room as far as uh, taste musically and things like that. And we were all just fans of each other. I'm a fan of Trina. I knew what uh, Shaq was doing musically. I was a fan. He had heard of me. And I don't know what made him come up with this record or where he got it from, but he, he came and I remember him walking in the studio. It was in, uh, in Chicago too. And he walked in, played the record for me, let me know what he wanted me to do on it. And uh, I had fun. Like that, that was a, a big record, like that record didn't blow up to be big, but that was a big moment for me to do music with Shaq. So. Did, did he already have his verse laid down for when he played it for you? Yep, he already wow. had his verse. Because yeah. he, was, he was rapping pretty fast out there. He was, yeah, he, he was, was killing yeah, yeah. 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 Shaq can spit. He can spit. There's no doubt about that. When I first saw you, I was like, don't stop, get it, get it. Perpetrate like you ain't with it, with it. I want to take it to the hotel, motel, holiday again. Damn right, Shaq trying to hit it. Have you ran into him a bunch since then? Um, yeah, I've seen him a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would see him in traffic in, in, in <laughs> Miami sometimes, just different places. Yeah, Shaq is like the big homie. Shout out to Shaq. I also, I feel like you have talked so openly about the older generation not being haters and, and wanting to embrace when newer mm. rappers are on the scene. And you were always so good at that too. I was even looking like you have the Waka Flocka feature, you know, mm. doing songs with Lil Reese. Like, why was it so important to you to embrace the newer generations, and was there any hesitation on your end when new sounds came in to to kind of take that into rap? Maybe once or twice as far as hesitation, but I don't think the hesitation was because of me not liking the new sound. The hesitation would be from me needing to understand it, because I would always know that if you don't like something and it, somebody does something and everybody else is liking it, then obviously there's something going on that you just don't understand. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that you are the one that's so correct about music that you get to say that that's whack. Who the fuck are you to say that yeah, that's yeah, whack? Yeah. That means you are the person that doesn't understand what's going on because they all have a vibe and, and, and something going on. So my whole thing was always knowing that hip hop is a youthful sport just like real sports. And, and you want to follow the youth. I've always heard that saying, follow the youth, follow the youth. So when it comes to this hip hop and this music, I'm always looking forward to the new sound or new creation that the younger generation comes up and brings when it comes to melodies, uh, music, how they do it. You know, so, so I always was a step ahead of most of my peers because when it came on, I, I would have an open mind whereas a lot of others would always be biased or stubborn a lot of times. So me, as soon as I heard it, I would have an open mind. And even if I didn't like it, it was always, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hmm, what the fuck, why did I, you know? And after a while, I would figure it out and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, and once I figure it out, it's over. 
Is, is that kind of how you felt about Chief Keef when you first heard him on the scene? Yeah, yeah, same thing, same thing. When I heard him, I knew it was a new sound. I knew that he was pioneering and ushering in a, a whole new vibe of music that I hear today. And so many rappers, yeah. I can name them over and over. I've seen so many rappers kind of mold and blend their style around the way he does his music. So, so I was always a, a, a fan of and appreciative of his style and music and vibe. Who would be on your uh, Chicago Mount Rushmore? So that's gonna be always different, man. That shit is gonna always be different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it would always be somebody I, I left out. Like if I named myself and Common and Ye and Lil Durk and G Herbo, then what about Chief Keef? What about Chance the Rapper? Yeah. What about, you know, it's, it's so many of them uh, in Chicago that, that kills it. Vic, uh, Vic, Vic Spencer, Mensa. Vic Mensa. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's, it's so many in Chicago that get down that's dope, man. I, I got so much respect for the artists in Chicago that uh, it would be hard to, to, to make that. But, but every rapper I named, I'm a fan of. I'm a big fan of. Juice World, all, all of the artists in, in Chicago, I'm a big fan of. You know, they, more so than they even know. You know, but when we have conversations, you know, throughout our life and they, they chat it up with me and vibe with the OG, I get to let them know. What is it about Chicago? Because it's so interesting where somewhere like Atlanta or New York, the sound is usually pretty unified and, and mm -hmm. there's a tie in. But Chicago is almost like a hub of creative geniuses. Like yeah. everybody has innovation. In the middle. Yeah. It's not it's not on one side. You know, when you when you come over here to the West Coast, you get a sound, a vibe. When you go to the East Coast, you get a sound, a vibe, even down South. Even though the music is all different, there's still a sound there. But when you're in the middle and you're like, <laughs> you know what a I mean? A little bit from everywhere. So it's yeah. like a melting pot. Like I would, re I would remember uh, you could go on a block in Chicago and on that one block you will have a, a rapper that sounds like an East Coast person, a rapper that sounds like somebody from the West Coast, and a rapper that sounds like somebody from the South, all that live on one block. That's you know what crazy. I mean? So, yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah, then. Chicago has always been like a melting pot. And then, you know, that's why I respect the whole, the, the, the drill sound so much, because that was something that was created by Chicago, Chicago yeah. you know, that when, when Chief Keef did his thing with that, it was like finally Chicago has a sound and a stamp that people can say that actually came from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Mr. Worldwide and, the, and Global, you, you mm -hmm. were with Pitbull super early. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 04, 05 or something like that. Yeah. But he was Way far back. from the Pitbull he is today. <laughs> did you have any convos about where he was trying to take things at the time, or did you see that? This was early. Nope, nope. Me and him was like two youngins in the game. I saw him doing this thing. We would probably have like the most hilarious conversation now. So, so we both were just young, doing our thing. I was vibing, and uh, I remember doing that record with him and, and kind of trying to give him what he wanted for that particular record. And uh, he was always, um, I just remember, he always knew the direction he wanted to go as far as his music and his sound, though. So, so I always looked up to him for that, you know. Yeah, it was, I, I remember hearing him with the Ying Yang twins and then like looking up three years later and he's got like six number one hits. Killing. Like, yeah. Killing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Real creative person. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I also wanted to know about uh, working with Lady Gaga and, and that mm -hmm. experience. I know you, you spoke up a little bit about it uh, last time you spoke to DX, but in terms of that time period, is that, was that a whole different world? Let's have some water. I, I, I tried to resist, but. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank well, you. you know but, uh, oh yeah, I would have been asked if I knew the damn label. Was. <laughs> uh, Lady Gaga is one of those people that, like as an artist, like it, w they all are talented. So I'm always looking for the extra thing, like what's different in this artist, in this artist, in this artist. And Lady Gaga, it would be uh, her drive, like, she's a fucking monster when it comes to work ethic and creativity. So when I got around her, that's the thing that I noticed. The, no, the first thing I noticed was how cool she was. You know, she walked up and, and just how pleasant she was to speak to and how open-minded she was. And then just watching her work though, the thing was, uh, it, it was amazing to see true hard work. Like I would say, if you are an up-and-coming artist and I wanted to take you in an environment 
to let you see what it really takes. To, to Of course, there's so many artists, but no, I would take your ass to go see Lady Gaga rehearse for some shows and do her thing. Yeah, like she really pushes herself beyond the limit to, to get uh, what she wants. And I always respected that. Well, very creative, super cool person. Her family is cool. You know, all her people cool. It was dope. Is there anybody else who, who you would put on that level of like hard work that you've been around that you've seen at that level? Mm, hit maker. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Insane. It's always been like that from when he was a kid all the way up to now. Just insane work ethic that nobody really gets to see beyond the surface. Like you, you can see it on the surface, but yeah. if you're actually in the studio with them and watch it come come together, you'd be like, God damn, this dude is creative. You know what I mean? So yeah. so people like him, and I never really shout him out a lot, but for some reason when you when you ask that question, that was the first person that came to my mind. He lives up to his name. He just stays oh, yeah. making hits. Crazy. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Like to watch that brother walk in that booth and just He'll just start mumbling something. It, it's different every time. He'll, I watched him just start mumbling something. Wasn't even words. Then he started building them into words. Then he changed the way the vocal sound. You would have never thought that what ended up being the outcome came from what I heard him doing when he first yeah. started from scratch. So Some dope, people's man. minds just work so interestingly. So dope. Like, man. even with you, the way that you were writing, I, I, I know you were writing on your sidekick. Mm -hmm. And you said you lost uh, a bunch of verses, including mm -hmm. Hope, or at least you lost that one. Was, what was your writing process when you're typing out from your thoughts to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just sounds like there's so much going through your head. How do you get it down in time? And just, is it just a flow, or do you go back and change things? Like, what was your writing process? Well, it's really, like, you can hold, you can hold a certain amount of lyrics in, in your mind. Like, the same way Jay does his music, he just, he, he memorizes it instead of write, writes it down. So I think, um, you know, you, you can, I'm pretty good at holding a cluster or chunk of words in my head and then start to write it down. You know, I'm pretty, pretty good at that. And it's always, a, it's always a madness to it. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes it may look smooth, but for the most part, the way it feels is wild hair, Dr. Frankenstein yeah. ha, ha, type of feeling. Like that's what's going on in my mind. So yeah. it's like a, 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 a happy madness going on in my mind. Fun madness. You know what I mean? Yeah, like piecing like a horror all movie, together. Just cutting the fucking body up with a smile <laughs> on your face. You know? <laughs> and then you go back. All right, just one more. Stab to the heart. Yeah, so it's just fun, man. The, 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 the method to the madness of, of making music is always fun, especially if you can change it up and switch it up and, and not have to create one way and you're able to take advantage of different aspects of creating. Today I'm going to write. Today I'm not going to write. Today I'm going to have this person mumble a cadence or something for me. Today I'm just gonna, do, you know, so it's it just yeah. fun and just take different advantages. It's know, like almost advantage. like on the producer end of things. You're like mm -hmm. kind of executive producing what you have a vision of in your head into the into yeah. the world. And I, I never want to get stuck into one level of creativity. So um, I want to be able to record with other people in a room. I want to be able to record if I'm there by myself. You know, uh, I want to be able to record in a fly studio. I want to be able to record in a trap house studio. You know, so you want to be able to have those. Well, me, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I never want to get pigeonholed or stuck into one level or way of creativity. So I'm always switching it up. Well, you talked about that a little bit in an interview where you were saying like a lot of people do pigeonhole themselves in a sense because of the rigidness of kind of the rules mm -hmm. of how hip hop works in a lot of ways or just being like, you know, the rapper, the best mm -hmm. rapper. And I know there's yep. so much convo with like, Drake right now, is he pop, is he hip hop, with obviously most Def's comments. Do, do you think, like how do you view that conversation in terms of what makes somebody hip hop, what makes a rapper collaboration when it comes to creation? Well, um, rap is a part of hip hop. So if you are rapping, you know, I mean, you are doing an aspect of hip hop, rather a person who is deep into hip hop whether they consider it hip hop enough or whatever, you know, that's, that's opinion based. But um, I, like as far as Drake, I knew he was gonna be a star soon as I heard that shit. The first mixtape, I'm like, damn, this dude spit. You know, you can tell. Like yeah. if, you, if you are a true rapper or a true connoisseur of 
hip hop or rap music, you can you can kind of tell. You know what I mean? And even with most deaf, I think most deaf was just doing a damn interview. And yeah, was saying yeah. something that got caught in the moment. I think you know so what I mean? Too. So it just happens, man. You know, and then you know he had to come out like, damn, this went wild. <laughs> He's like, I did not so realize this was it. <laughs> I had no idea that this would go. You know, so he probably was kind of lightweight, cracking a joke a little bit or whatever he was doing, and it went a little too far. And it's like, you know, that's the world we live in today. But you know, I think uh, there's a lot of rap and a lot of music that I would consider hip hop that some people may or may not, you know, even if it's, you got to think there's a, I mean, Lauren Hill is hip hop in the motherfucker. Even if she just singing, you, yeah. you still feel hip hop. You know what I mean? So when you say that word, it's a feeling to it. You know what I mean? It's a, you know hip hop when you hear it. And you know, you know the intent for music to be hip hop when you hear it. You know what I mean? It's yeah, one thing yeah, to yeah. say, okay, this sounds hip hop, but hip hop or music that I really appreciate from someone that calls it hip hop or wants it is when you intend it to be hip hop and go at it as such. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's one thing to say, okay, that's hip hop, but it's another thing when a person intends it and when you listen to it, you fucking hear it. As soon as you hear J Electronica, you know this is intended hip hop yeah. as soon as you hear it. You know what I mean? As soon Electronica. as you hear J. Rule the Damager. You know what this was as soon as you heard it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I, I, I wanted to get, where were you when you first heard uh, Drake and where were you when, when you first heard J. Electronica? Drake, I think, uh, probably coming back from a show on the road or at the, at the studio, you know, and not really being around a lot of people when I was listening to it because I was in my own creative space. So it wasn't like I'm watching everybody vibe out to it. I'm sitting here listening to it myself. So I know a dope rapper when I hear it. You know, then once the nigga said, what'd he say? I do one song and use four flows. Oh, it was over, right there. I do one song and use four flows. You know, because I know I do a song and use four flows. So when I heard somebody else say that, instantly I was like, this cat is about to be like the man. Crazy. What about Jay Electronica? I just went crazy when I heard him. <laughs> I heard a, a hip hop dude, like, he sounds like the pure essence of hip hop to me. You know what I mean? Like if you looked up hip hop in the dictionary, that his ass go right there, you know what I mean? So that's what he sounded like to me, like just the pure essence of hip hop, lyrically, vocally, the whole intent, the, the way he sounds on uh, uh, Just Blaze's music, you know, everything is yeah. just dope. So I, I like him as a Shout out to Jay. Hopefully we get an album sometime. We need a twist of Jay Electronica collab. Man, we, we both running late, man. Yeah. <laughs> man. I was also going to ask, has M sent over a free feature verse for stealing the SEO clout on your album title yet? No, <laughs> he need to. Yeah, he, he, he owed me a verse on the song now. So just yeah, when you saw that, were you like, ah, come on, not again? Because it happened with Common too, right? Or there was at least like some back and forth about the album title. Yeah, but it, it happens, man. It happens. I, that, that's something I had to learn in, in hip hop. You know, early on, you would swear a person is concentrating on you your little ass when you're doing, you know what I mean? But but that thing happens, man. It happens. So, uh, you, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm still a fan. So if anything came out of it, it would be like, oh, damn, T, that's right, you did. I, let me send you this song. <laughs> you, can hop on the, the things, you know what I mean? So. There we go. We'll make it happen. Uh, one last feature I was going to ask you about. Uh, I know you've spoken about it a little bit with Chance the Rapper, but when you first had that record, uh, did you recognize that he was going to be kind of the start of a whole new movement in Chicago? Yeah, I can tell that one too. That's that thing where I told you where you can see the, the up and coming youngsters doing that thing and you kind of yeah. know, I knew. Like we were doing an in-store together when uh, we got a chance to chop it up. But just listening to the sound, I'm like, damn, well, you know, you never heard anything like this before. So, you know, I kind of made sure he was looking at me and paying attention to me. And he was like, T, I got this damn record. You know what I mean? So we started chopping up. It was very organic, the way we talked about doing that record. He gave it to me. I was like, damn. Then I didn't send it back as quickly as I could because Vic Mensa was on the goddamn record killing me. <laughs> he made me think a little bit too hard. So, so it took me a little minute, but I got it together. And, and I'm glad to hear that that's one of the uh, top... Like, that's people's favorite yeah. record from that particular project, a lot of people. So I'm yeah. happy about that. I can make a 
flow, hit a paddle with a paddle, pit a two C. Used to be in a jalapia and in a goofy. Trying hard not to be addicted to a groupie. It was it was just a perfect song. Like everybody killed it. Everybody had like the perfect part, I feel like. That song is so fun. I don't perform it enough. I'm gonna stop performing. Yeah, anymore. yeah, okay, yeah. good reaction. And then in terms of the guns and the recent viral that you had with mm -hmm. uh, rapping over the gunshots. When did you kind of come up with that concept? You won't bang when you take that path. Candlelights when you take the bath. You got such a sensation to wax. I'm gonna get you Jimmy Choo and I'll take the bath. Well, I think naturally because I do music and how creative I am, at some point I was gonna start meshing something together. So upon doing it, I'm discovering, damn, Somebody is already doing it, and then I see this guy shooting these big ass guns to the rhythm of the beat, and I was captivated. So I, when I saw it, I was like, "Damn!" And then I started thinking, like, "Would he link with me?" Ah, he wouldn't link with me. He wouldn't link with me now. Nah. And then he was doing metal, so this shit is sounding vicious to me. I'm like, "No, he wouldn't link with me." And so I went on ahead and hit him up. I was like, "Man, I hit him on the DM." I was like, "You know what you need out there, right? You need a vocalist." I was like, I see what you're doing, but let's take it to the next level. Have me out there. And he was game for the idea. Turns out he was a fan. His brother was more so a fan of my music. We made it happen. He's such a cool person. Went out there, and now we got some, some, some plans in the, in the works. You know, like, you, we should be able to deliver you soon the first gun range concert. So that's what Ooh, we're working on. That yeah. is going to be next level. I'm excited. Are there other, other rappers that you would love to get involved or your dream gun range concert? Well, it's a few that I wouldn't mind getting it in with anybody, but uh, Nate Gun Drummer being a fan of certain people, he really wants to get it in with certain people. Yeah. So uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony is one of the first people that he wants to get it in with. So my boys got to come out there and, and make sure they get it in. I would love to, you know, dual wheel some, some, some guns to some of their drums and everything. That would be dope. But he's got plans uh, of getting it in with them, and I know we're going to kill it when they come around. Well, I'm, ex I'm excited to see that. We're excited to hear it.